Well, staying with that story, we're joined now by Dr. Andrew O'Regan, a GP and lecturer in general practice. Dr. O'Regan, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Now, you are one of about one in five GPs in this country who has signed a petition expressing your concerns about the legislation, the provision of an abortion service, um, which is set to start from January of next year. You might outline some of the concerns that you have. Good evening, Katrina. Yes, this is a very serious issue. We're two months out now from the minister's proposed start date for his abortion uh, plans, and over 600 GPs have signed a petition outlining our concerns about the proposed legislation. Uh, unfortunately, even at this late stage, the minister has failed to consult with GPs on the ground. What he's done is to consult with a small number of officers on the, the college board, but he hasn't uh, taken on board at all the attitudes and the wide range of attitudes of GPs on the ground. So we're wondering how we can expect GPs to roll out this service when he hasn't even taken the time to consult with us on it. Now, the, the, the GPs, the, the 600 or so who have signed this petition, they were on both sides of the debate during the referendum campaign. So the concerns you have are, are quite varied, aren't they? Yes, you're correct, Katrina. There, there are a wide range of uh, GPs and opinions represented in that 600-strong uh, uh, petition. Uh, and again, coming from both sides in the abortion debate. The key things are, is that the minister is proposing a GP-led service. The first we heard about this was actually on the television. He never took the time to engage with us and to hear our concerns, and there are many. General practice in Ireland is at maximum capacity at the moment. There are many lists that are closed and doctors who cannot take on new patients. How does he expect us to be able to have the capacity to treat these women who are in a crisis properly and give them the time and respect they deserve when there are so many unresolved issues? Issues around ultrasound, issues around access to secondary care if and when there are complications. And, you know, it, it is an absolute disrespect to expect to be able to roll this out and not actually uh, sit down and listen to the concerns that are being aired again and again. Now, Dr. Regan, I mean, the whole premise to the debate in the spring of this year was around, I mean, Minister Harris said frequently this would be a GP-led, doctor-led service. We're at the point where today the legislation is being discussed before the Oireachtas Committee and we're two months out from a start. Is it not a bit late to be rallying the troops in this way? I think it's really unfortunate that it has come to this. There were several opportunities, numerous opportunities since the referendum to engage with us. This is not the first such petition asking the minister to engage. I think it's actually possibly gone beyond the minister at the moment. And it is a crisis in general practice, a crisis relating uh, to his, his bill. And it's not a crisis of our making. Uh, I still don't think it's too late for the government to engage with GPs on this issue. And I think a, a satisfactory outcome could be achieved for all, even at this late stage in the day. Now, aside from the issues that some, yourself and other colleagues are, are raising around capacity and so on, you have a particular issue yourself in that you would describe yourself as a pro-life GP who will be a conscientious objector when this service comes into play. So, as the legislation stands, you will be permitted to refuse to provide a service to a woman seeking a termination, but you will have to refer her on to a colleague who will provide that service. Are you going to do that? So, Katrina, this issue around referral is really, really important, and it's another issue that hasn't been addressed by the Minister. It's hard to believe that in two months' time, if things go to plan, we're going to have an abortion facility in this country where GPs who don't want to be part of it are going to face a uh, sanction by the Medical Council, or as Minister Harris himself said, will face the law of the land. I mean, how do you, how do you roll out anything properly? Surely you listen to all sides. And what you certainly don't do is you force professionals, hard-working GPs, into doing something and being complicit in something that they, number one, think is not good evidence-based medicine, and number two, if it runs completely against their deeply held beliefs. 
So what we're asking is a stall to be put on this right now and for, for the government to really listen to our concerns. GPs are in their hundreds uh, saying that they're not going to participate in a referral system, especially when it shouldn't come to that. In a digital age, in an age where access to all sorts of information can be found online, there should be no need to force a GP into making a referral. I don't think it does the GP any service and I certainly don't think it does any woman any service either. All right, and these are the issues, of course, that the Oireachtas will, Committee will be discussing over the coming days. But for this evening, Dr. Regan, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us. A 60